Hello there, right here, and what you see behind me is the perfect skeleton farm. This thing produces bones, arrows, even slowness arrows, even have a chance of getting enchanted bows and armor, including diamond. You don't even have to use a sword to kill these guys. It is done using your dog. That means you can stand anywhere within range of the spawner and it'll be working getting all these items automatically. And remember to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell as I've come up with thousands of new inventions from Minecraft over the years and enjoy showing you all of them on my channel. This also has some cool features added in 1.17 and let's get started at looking at how you would build this up in your very own world as well as how it works. But first off, you need to find a spawner that's a skeleton spawner. You can find these in monster dungeons underground. You need to clear out two blocks above the spawner. You also need to clear out four blocks on each side of it. And you need to also clear out two blocks underneath of it. Put a button on top of it to prevent normal mobs like creepers from spawning on it. Then place a row of water sources on the backside, all flowing to one direction. What we got over here is a trough that is one block lower and it is seven blocks long. We got a water source right here and it's moving all the mobs to this location. We have a banner to hold back this water or you can use a open fence gate. Then we got another water source that's one block lower and it's moving all the mobs into this bubble column over here. There's three blocks worth of water there and now they go into this bubble elevator. I do have a wall right here to give them easy transition from this area up into the soul sand. This is where it's going to move them upwards. Next, you want to build this water tube here. It doesn't matter what block type you use for this entire build as long as light doesn't go through it. So for the bubble elevator, there is 16 blocks of water sources. You can put these in using a water bucket or you can place in ice and break it or you can put in flowing water and then grow kelp up through it and then remove the kelp. After you got 16 water sources, you have two blocks of air up above it. Then we have five blocks back here and above them we put in our water source. This makes it get very thin at the edge and just barely reaches this powder snow over here. So powder snow is a new feature of 1.17. You don't need it in this farm, but it is used to turn your normal skeletons into strays to get those slowness arrows automatically. So after the skeletons come up and then there is four blocks across, then they're going to go through the powder snow here. And it's put at such a level so that if they are wearing leather armor, they would typically wouldn't be able to fall through it. But since they're moving in from the side, they can slide right into the powder snow and still fall through. Now any skeleton wearing leather won't freeze and turn into a stray. That's just fine. It doesn't clog the system up. After they touch this for a short period of time, they will start to convert, convert over into strays. We also have this cobweb to keep them inside of the powder snow for a long enough period of time. And after they come out of it, then they're going to drop down so they have a low amount of health for our dog to kill them. So we got powder snow, air, then we got a cobweb, and then there is 22 blocks of air where they fall downwards. And then after the 22 blocks, we have a trap door, which is on the bottom of the block. And then underneath of that, we have a jungle log with a fully grown cocoa bean. I use this for a very special reason. It's the perfect height so that if a skeleton falls down either on the cocoa bean or on the trap door, they will take similar amount of damage, which is great because we're trying to get their health as low as possible to help the dog out, making his job a lot easier. We have a tame wolf that is owned by the player that is AFKing it. It has to be your dog and it can't be other people's. We have it inside of a minecart. You can do this by having a curved rail near a dog and placing a minecart on it and pushing it. And then it'll get pulled right into the minecart. And then we push the entire thing right up against this cocoa bean here so that the minecart is pressed up against it. From this location, the dog is close enough to the center so when this trap door opens up, he can kind of see up through it and he can see the skeleton's eye level right here. So in order for the dog to attack the skeletons, their center of the red line has to meet the center of the skeleton's red line. And once there is a clear view between those two locations, the dog can attack the skeleton. And that's why the trapdoor opens up for a short period of time to give him line of sight. And this also drops the skeleton lower so that the dog can continue to attack it even though the trapdoor closes. Because the dog knows where the skeleton is. And even though the dog loses sight of it, he will continue to attack that skeleton until it's dead. So it took a lot of testing for me to come up with this setup, but essentially it doesn't matter how much health the skeleton has, 
Once a dog can see it, you can keep attacking it until it dies. And this way we can guarantee that the dog can kill the skeletons without taking any damage. Now there's still a chance that these guys will spawn in with some like thorns, enchantments on their armor, and slowly take down the dog's health. But the chance of getting thorns armor is a lot more rare than the chance of getting protection armor. Because if they have like feather falling or protection, then when they fall, they won't have as much health removed from them, meaning it takes the dog a little bit longer to kill them. In which case, the skeleton would have time to shoot back. And this is why we close the trap door after the dog attacks them, so they can't shoot back at him. And when they die, their items will be picked up from the hopper, and they will be put down into this chest here. If you want to, you can put this into an item sorter to sort the different items out. And don't worry if you see items kind of get stuck on top of this trap door. When you're Ave King over here, you'll be able to pick them up through the corner. Now the way we have the trap door open and closed, we just have it on a clock. So we have a comparator clock here. You can kind of see everything easily. It's on the compare mode. So this is flicked upwards. Going into a note block, which is going into observer, into a repeater on forward game ticks. And that's going into the block, which is touching the trap door. Now since the skeletons that fall down here have low health, I open and close the trap door fairly quickly. But if you have skeletons that have a lot of health, let's say you don't drop them as far, you don't want the trap door to open up as fast. Otherwise they'll turn around and shoot back through the opening and hurt your dog. So you can add more delay if your skeletons have like more armor on them or if they just have more health in general. And this is actually all the redstone there is in this entire build. Now for the farm to run, the player has to be within range of the mob spawner, so within 16 blocks of it. And if you want to, you can also pick up the XP which come off of them. Because when the dog kills them, it's considered a player kill. And this is why you're able to get stuff like the slowness arrows, the bows, and the armor. So if you just stand here, you can pick up the XP through the corner. And if you want to run this farm for a long period of time without having to worry about your dog dying, from thorns damage coming off of the skeletons, you can sit here and have your right click button held down with some food in your hand. And I just have a trap door above me to make me a little bit lower so I can right click on the dog. You can see I'm feeding it. And if he gets hurt, then you're able to give him some more food. Now he will take some new food, no matter if he's hungry or not, in an attempt to breed. You might want to make a system that automatically gives the player some more rotten flesh or maybe have a zombie farm hooked up to this. Or feed them another type of meat like chicken, which you can get from a chicken farm. You can put that near this. But tame dogs do have 20 health, which means the same amount as a player. So it takes quite a while for them to die from thorns damage. You can also come in with a potion system to heal the dog. But stuff like regen beacons nearby don't affect your pets. And also holding a looting sword doesn't help get better loots when the dog kills them. That's only if the player does the final damage to the mob while holding this in the main hand. Also, fox are not considered pets and won't work in this to get looting. Now from this location with the player AFKs, you are within range of the spawner so it will be constantly working. But this is kind of the limits if you go any farther downwards or away, it'll stop producing mobs. Always recommend to box yourself in quite well when you go AFK. And just by AFKing this for one hour, you get around 43 levels of XP. So it could be a great way to kind of mend your armor while you're AFKing this farm. You get quite a few loot from this farm. Not only a large amount of bones, but also a wide variety of armor pieces and bows with enchantments. Around the farm for one hour, you can kind of see what you can expect in a one hour time. You'll get roughly eight stacks of bones, eight stacks of arrows, and about four stacks worth of slowness arrows. There's even a chance of getting diamond armor pieces as well as nicely enchanted bows. There's a couple of little things I'll point out to kind of explain what they're used for. So we have this water source which is flowing into this area here. That's just an air block that this source is flowing into. And that just pulls the mobs into this channel so they're able to not get their heads stuck up against this block right here. You'll see as they come in, they're going to get pulled all the way to the backside and pulled upwards. Also put in a magma block because we can get glow squid to spawn in as well as axolotls because they spawn underground like normal squids. And it's unlikely for them to spawn inside of your farm, but they can spawn inside bubble columns. If you would happen to have an area that really has no water whatsoever around it, then you might get some inside. In which case, this magma block over here will kind of pull them over and kill them there. Also puts them up here for the same reason. And also left these openings here with these open fence gates. 
So any squid or axolotl that come through will eventually get pushed to the side and fall out. And make sure to check the description as if I do any updates to this farm, I'll add them down there. If you'd like to check out this farm in more detail, I'll provide the world download so you can see block for block exactly how to build it up. And I have a whole bunch of new 1.17 farms. So if you're looking for all the things that you can farm up in 1.17, make sure to check out my simple farms playlist. And don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as share it, as I will be doing many more videos like this about other farms I've designed. I would like to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.